and I've said this many times, I'll say it again, you know, MES is not a product. It's a quilt. Okay. Uh, it's a quilt of capabilities that you put together. But if we wanted to say, what is a manufacturing execution system? The best way to describe manufacturing execution system is to say it this way. It is the place where a sales order gets converted into the execution of manufacturing. That's what MES is. It's a place in the model. Okay. Um, Kirthana asks, do a lot of customers ask for a custom EMS, MES? And what are the benefits over an off-the-shelf MES? We're actually going to cover this in the MES Bootcamp and in Mastermind Friday, but I'll, I'll give you the answer here. If you buy off-the-shelf MES, you will be disappointed. Okay. Generally, the way that this goes is originally they'll start by trying to buy an off-the-shelf MES, right? And then there are capabilities that they need that are unique to their business that that off-the-shelf MES can't provide. Manufacturing execution system is not a, it does not consume the structure of your business from the ERP and then impose that structure on your manufacturing operation, right? So if you think of like order of operations or your manufacturing steps, right? You define, you generally define those in your ERP system, okay? And they are, they're static, they're, they're not flexible, right there, this is the way it's supposed to be done. But what happens if you can't do it that way? If, if a machine is down or, you know, an asset is down, how, how do you handle the flexibility? And the answer is you just sort of don't. You, it doesn't mean that you're going to go, oh, because the ERP says I'm supposed to work on, I'm supposed to do the work on this work center. Um, and, I, and I can't do it on that work center because it's not running. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to move it to this other work center where I know it can work. Or, Let's say uh, the, the, we define a production line as cell A, cell B, cell C, cell D. And then line two is cell E, cell F, cell G, cell H. And I go through and I, and I process my, I have my work and flow is A, B, C, but cell D goes down. And I have the ability to move everything from D by hand over to the end of the other production line to finish it. I'm going to do that, Okay. Even if it means I got to set up a temporary conveyor or however I'm going to do it, I'm going to do that. My ERP system won't, it isn't designed to, to handle that, right? No ERP system, by the way, is designed to handle that type of change. One of the mistakes that we make, to answer Kirthana's question, one of the mistakes that we make is that we believe that all manufacturing happens the way it is theoretically designed to happen. It, the, definitely people on the carpeted side of the business believe that. But anybody who works on the concrete side of the floor, the business knows production is king. No one gives a shit what's in the ERP. We're just going to, we're going to produce and we're going to do whatever it takes to produce. So what does that mean? What it means is, is that your manufacturing execution system should not be, it should not be designed to enforce a model that exists in the ERP. The MES system should be a reflection of the reality on the plant floor, okay? And so what ends up happening? When I buy an off-the-shelf MES, off-the-shelf MES is designed to enforce the model that lives in the ERP, the master data model, the structure of the business, the, the material management, all that. But the reality is, is that there are edge cases that have to be accounted for. There are capabilities that customer A needs that customer B doesn't need. There's a, there are capabilities that plant A from customer A needs, but plant B from customer A doesn't need, okay? The truth is, is that MES is not, should not be rigid. It should be designed and built to be a reflection of your reality, not impose theory on your reality. So don't, not from the ERP down, but a reflection of what's actually happening on the plant floor. No one has ever said this. Okay, this is this is something that's never been said. No operations manager or production supervisor or machine operator has ever said, that has ever said, we can't do it that way because the ERP doesn't say we can do it that way. No one has no one's ever said that. No one has ever said we can't do it that way because the MES system doesn't say we can do it that way. 
And if anybody, I challenge anyone here to say, to prove me, you know, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong here. No one has ever said, oh, no, we're not going to run it on that machine because the MES system says we, doesn't say that we can. No. You, production's king. Okay. So mo nearly everybody, I don't know anyone who doesn't eventually move to either a hybrid MES, which is a combination of off-the-shelf features plus custom features married together. This is why using an IIoT platform, a platform for solving problems is so important, you know, where you can, you can build things and you can put, you can put things you built right alongside things the OEM built. You can put them together in the same screen, right? But I, most people, very, 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 very few customers are satisfied with off-the-shelf MES. Very few. Now, and that's why what you'll see is I may have off-the-shelf MES for these three capabilities like OEE calculation, and then I've got another platform that's giving me these four capabilities, and then I've got this homebrew application I built that's giving me these other eight capabilities. But if I add all those capabilities together, that's the quilt that makes up my MES layer. But they're in three different places, and they don't interoperate with one another. Part of what we create what we encourage people to create is, is that hybrid version of MES where you can take homogenous features. Homogenous means it's uniform across the entire organization and put them right alongside heterogeneous features, which are customer unique in the same place, same screen, single pane of glass in the same unified namespace. Okay. Um, Doug Albright, many think of MES as OEE and related KPIs but the MES standard was primarily made to integrate into the ERP layer. Will you be covering ERP integration in the MES bootcamp? Yes, we will not be integrating to an ERP, but we are going to show you how to integrate to an ERP as a consideration, okay? In general, and we're gonna be using a business connector within the Ignition platform to do that. A good question, Doug. Uh, Yousef, is there a must have, a nice to have list functionality for MES, OEE is basic must have if we are to evaluate on uh, off the shelf MES. Okay. Outside of, outside of status, so that is um, cell line area uh, plant status, TEEP, OEE, and downtime tracking. Out outside of those four things, okay? Those are the four that you are always, 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 always going to do. Everything outside of that is optional. I mean, I would say work order management is probably used in 90% of the applications. At a minimum, you're consuming work orders from ERP. Um, I would say scheduling 50% of the time happens in the MES layer. 50% of the time it happens in the ERP layer. It should happen in the MES layer, not in the ERP layer. Um, you should schedule an MES push to ERP. And then, and the reason why is because you're going to have to push schedule changes from the manufacturing floor to the ERP in your edge cases anyway. So that should be your standard, right? So if what you do is assume that the schedule is always going to go from ERP down to the manufacturing layer, down to the, down to the machine layer, if you think that that's what's going to happen 100% of the time, you're kidding yourself. Even companies like Toyota who they have one of the most advanced custom ERP, MES, CMMS layers in the world, their ALS system or ASL, whatever it is. Even Toyota, who manages every one of their production facilities from Japan and, and pushes those pushes the, the um, schedule and work orders and bill of materials and everything from Japan to their facilities here in the United States, even they have edge cases. And they have edge cases they can't account for. Okay, so it, the, it's, it needs to be inverted. You know, the, the, schedule, the schedule really needs to happen in the MES layer and be pushed to the ERP layer so that you, you, what you've done is you've, you've architected a way to push the edge cases, the deltas, to the ERP when, the, when they happen. 